Mandy and I welcome you back to the Chosen's Blended Harmony of the Gospel. We are on Day 18, Part 3, Forgiveness Without Limits and the Cost of Following Jesus. We are in Matthew 18, verse 21, Forgiveness Without Limits. Then Peter approached him and asked, Lord, how many times must I forgive my brother or sister who sins against me? As many as seven times? Now it's funny because he's thinking, ooh, seven's a big number and the number of completion, so Jesus should be happy with that answer, right? And Jesus says, I tell you, not as many as seven, Jesus said, but 70 times seven, which for those of you who can't do math is 490 times. For this reason, the kingdom of heaven can be compared to a king who wanted to settle accounts with his servants. When he began to settle accounts, one who owed him 10,000 talents was brought before him. Since he did not have the money to pay it back, the master commanded that he, his wife, his children, and everything he had be sold to pay the debt. At this, the servant fell face down before him and said, Be patient with me, and I will pay you everything. Then the master of that servant had compassion, released him, and forgave him the loan. Wow, that's a big loan. The servant went out and found one of his fellow servants who owed him a hundred denarii. He grabbed him, started choking him, and said, Pay what you owe. At this, his fellow servant fell down and began begging him, Be patient with me, and I will pay you back. But he wasn't willing. Instead, he went and threw him into prison until he could pay what he owed. When the other servants saw what had taken place, they were deeply distressed and went and reported to their master everything that had happened. Then, after he summoned him, his master said to him, You wicked servant, I forgave you the debt because you begged me. Shouldn't you also have mercy on your fellow servant as I had mercy on you? And because he was angry, the master handed him over to the jailers to be tortured until he could pay everything that was owed. So also my heavenly Father will do to you unless every one of you forgives his brother or sister from his heart. The Journey Through Samaria When the days were coming to a close for him to be taken up, he determined to journey to Jerusalem. He sent messengers ahead of himself, and on the way they entered a village of the Samaritans to make preparations for him. But they did not welcome him, because he determined to journey to Jerusalem. When the disciples, James and John, saw this, they said, Lord, do you want us to call down fire from heaven to consume them? But he turned and rebuked them, and they went to another village. The Cost of Following Jesus As they were traveling on the road, a scribe approached and said to him, Teacher, I will follow you wherever you go. Jesus told him, Foxes have dens and the birds of the sky have nests, but the Son of Man has no place to lay his head. Then he said to another disciple, Follow me. Lord, he said, First let me go bury my father. But he told him, Follow me and let the dead bury their own dead, but you go and spread the good news of the kingdom of God. And another said, I will follow you, Lord, but first let me go and say goodbye to those at my house. Jesus said to him, No one who puts his hand to the plow and looks back is fit for the kingdom of God. Okay, lots of great stuff. Let's go back to forgiveness without limits. Remember, Peter said, Should I forgive seven times? And Jesus says, No, I tell you, not as many as seven, but seventy times seven. And I love it because seven is the number of completion. So 70 times seven is like completion upon completion. And basically he's not saying don't count to 490 times, Peter. It should be endless. As many times as someone sins against you, you should forgive. Now, I just want to throw in there, and I believe Jesus thought this too, If someone's like abusing you or something like that, you can forgive them, but it's okay to get away from those kind of people, right? We're not just supposed to be a doormat, but people in our family and our work and everywhere, they're going to make mistakes, right? And we want to be a forgiving person. And why? Here's the key to why. Because God forgives us. His forgiveness to me is endless. It's 7,000 times 7,000 when it comes to Nancy because I'm sinning a lot my whole life and I'm pretty old, right? So that's the point he's making. Just as our Heavenly Father has no limit on how many times he'll forgive us, so we should also have no limit on the number of times we forgive those around us. And then I love this story about the king. The one servant owed 10,000 talents. And back then, a talent was the biggest unit of money. So this guy in today's age probably owed millions of dollars, like a lot of debt. I don't know how he got into that much debt, but he did. But then this guy had a servant under him come and only owed 100 denarii. But he grabbed him and started choking him and said, pay what you owe, demanding this. 
So a talent is a huge unit of money and the guy owed 10,000. The other man only owed 100 denarii and one denarii was pretty much a man's day's wages. So he owed 100 days of wages, which is like nothing compared to the other guy who literally owed like millions of dollars. But the king was kind and forgave the first man because he begged, but when the second man begged, he was going to throw him into prison till he could pay back. Well, if he throws him in jail, how is he going to work and pay anything back? So the other servants went and told the master. And then this is what the master said. You wicked servant. I forgave you all the debt because you begged me. Shouldn't you have had mercy on your fellow servant as I had mercy on you? And that's the key right there, right? He was forgiven of a huge debt, but he turned around and couldn't forgive a man of just 100 days wages. And that's kind of the same with us, right? If we don't forgive someone of something, it's just like a very small amount, like 100 day wages. But God has forgiven me all my sin and I get eternal life. So that's a really great example and that we all need to be following. We need to be forgiving 70 times 7, basically limitless forgiveness. And then the cost of following Jesus, we have three examples. The first person came and said, Teacher, I will follow you wherever you go. And Jesus said, Foxes have dens, birds of the sky have nests, but the Son of Man has no place to lay his head. So he's basically telling this man, I wander all around. I don't have a house. I just go from place to place. And so it's hard. And are you really going to do hard things for me? Are you willing to sacrifice all of that for him? The second man wanted to follow Jesus. Jesus said, follow me. And the man said, Lord, let me first go bury my father. But Jesus said, follow me and let the dead bury their own dead. But you go spread the good news of the kingdom of God. Now, I did a little research on this. It wasn't that the man's father had already just died and they were going to do a funeral in a couple days. He was kind of waiting till his father died in the future, maybe five, ten years from then, so he could get his inheritance, so he made sure he kind of had his money and stuff in place, and then he was going to go follow Jesus. And that's when Jesus said, let the dead, like spiritually dead people, just bury their own dead, but you come over here with me and start preaching about the good news of the kingdom. And then the last man said, I will follow you, Lord, but first let me go and say goodbye to those at my house. And Jesus said, no one who puts his hand to the plow and looks back is fit for the kingdom of God. And what he's saying here is that we don't want to let our family or friends, people around us, draw us away from following Jesus. Because like if someone's plowing, you're supposed to be looking straight ahead, right? And if you're always looking back over your shoulder at other things when you're plowing in the field, you're going to have a crooked field. It's not going to work in God's kingdom to have crooked rows, right? When we're planting these seeds of faith. So he's saying that he needs to be more important than your family. Now, you still want to be taking care of your family, of course. But the most important thing of our life should be Jesus. That should be our focus. Not trying to follow Jesus, but looking over our shoulder at everything else behind us. So the cost of following Jesus is great, but the rewards are greater. So I hope today you remember that we all need to have endless forgiveness. And we need to follow Jesus with all of our heart and keep our eyes on Him. Have a great day thinking about those thoughts. And come back again tomorrow for more Harmony of the Gospels. Because remember, God's Word in your heart, my friend, is the best way to live. We'll see you tomorrow. You can get your own copy of A Blended Harmony of the Gospels by The Chosen simply by going to thechosengifts.com. There you can find all kinds of wonderful merchandise to help build your faith this year. Be sure to check out their devotionals and their Bible studies. Have a blessed day.